can't help but notice, everyone gets a fair amount of action and lines, except for the unnamed boy. Alongside Jesus himself, the boy is the real star here. The disciples, the crowd, Philip, Andrew, Jesus, all have much to say and do. Between them, I counted 37 some odd verbs of active engagement. The boy gets one. He has loaves and fishes. That's it. Jesus and the others have upfront roles, but the boy doesn't even make an appearance. We just hear of him unnamed. We don't know why he has five loaves of bread, perhaps hoping to sell some, taking them to someone. Did he go to Andrew and offer his food, or did Andrew come and ask everyone? And was the boy the only one who revealed that he had food to share? There's not so much as a thanks for sharing, son. And yet that boy is a critical part of the miracle. He offers what he has, and Jesus makes the most of it and reminds us to do the same. In John's gospel, Jesus receives the crowd, teaches, asks about food. He takes it and blesses it, breaks it and distributes it. The disciples don't. They're learning. And then they're sent out to gather up the leftovers, 12 baskets full. And you know, barley bread was the lowest standard of bread back then. Fit only for beasts, it was said. What would Jesus have done if no one had often offered even those barley loaves and fish? What story would we have then? Hungry people unfed, waiting? We are told Jesus knew what he was going to do, though the disciples did not. I'm sure such knowledge is a perk of being the son of God. He knew this was a powerful opportunity, a time to teach them a vital lesson. Do you remember those signs Maybe you see them still in schools and libraries. Knowledge is power. Anybody? I did. Do we still think so? We struggle for knowledge of what is true. We wonder if we can trust our knowledge of facts, of what we see with our own eyes. Did he really just do that, say that, or was that AI generated? We wonder if news sources are slanted and which way. We see immense suffering in Gaza, the Ukraine, Sudan, Burkina Faso, Kenya, and more in the US. And we wonder, are we getting the story? We wonder, and sometimes, Rather than moving people to action, all of this leaves us reeling and asking, what's the right thing to do? What can we do? First, we pray, as we will in a few moments, asking God's help and guidance. We will pray for the church, the world, the planet, the community, those close to us, those who have died. And those words of prayer carry such freight that we wonder, what are my loaves and fish among so many? We fear that what we have to give is not enough. And yet, like that boy's generosity, in Jesus' hands, what we offer, what we offer up in thanksgiving is more than enough to make a difference a difference that reveals the bounty of the kingdom of God, even if not solving all problems. We can drill down into endless detail and opinions online until we're just overwhelmed with inertia. Then that same device tempts me, maybe a few of you, with crossword puzzles, entertainment, social media, shopping, which in contrast 
might be more appealing than the frustration of not being able to solve the world's problems. Enter John's Gospel. It's all about Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. To know this, to know him, truly is power. The bottomless kind that refuses to be objectified or controlled. It can't be seized and put in a boat or put on a throne and crowned. It is not as easily played with as what's on our screens because it's knowledge of a very different kind, one which is expressly relational and intensely passionate. It is knowledge that grounds the knowing event in the triune life as revealed in the incarnation of Jesus. Parker Palmer, one of my favorite theologians, writes, in Christian tradition, truth is not a concept that works, but an incarnation that lives. Truth is not a concept that works, but an incarnation that lives. A boy has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Andrew asked, in the incarnation that lives, it's enough and then some. Palmer again, at the end of knowledge stands Jesus. At the end of human knowledge is the beginning of love's knowledge. That's more than plenteous. Our collect this morning that we began with prays that God's mercy is multiplied upon us, within us, so that with God's guidance we may so pass through things temporal that we not lose things eternal. It's like the difference between our human knowledge and love's knowledge. Jesus is addressing our temptation to give up in the face of need, showing us that what we think we know is absolutely impossible, even with six months' wages, is too limited. That's accounting according to things temporal. When Jesus is pointing us instead to things eternal, abundant, pointing us to see that abundance instead of only finitude. And as an Easter people, this is who we are, following a love so great that neither 5,000 hungry people nor even a grave can hold it back. Those loaves and fishes which fed so many people through Jesus' blessing are very like the loaves at our table every time we share communion. We bring our fears of scarcity, our confessions, grief, worries, prayers of hope, and we lay them down before our most merciful God in offering. And it's all gathered in. Jesus gathers us into himself and invites us to his table the bread and the wine revealing the incarnation that lives. He again took those loaves, blessed, broke, and gave them, distributing them among us as among, as among those he saw that day, and feeds us all. We use, actually they're back there right now, we use real loaves of bread for communion here, which I so appreciate. Perhaps today they help us recall that boy's loaves that he offered. And think of that as you see them come forward to our altar, being brought forth. Jesus receives the bread we bring to and blesses it for all who come. In other churches, we've used wafers and I can't see Jesus trying to eyeball how many wafers for how many people. It just does not work. The bread is genuinely broken for us all until everyone is fed and all are welcome. We gather up the fragments and sometimes they're taken out into the world as communion for people who can't be here. 
people who need communion from this altar still. So may we remember that we all go out into the world carrying with us Christ's blessing, Christ's gift of plenteousness, that we also may become bread for the world, sharing the incarnation that lives. Amen.